Hey people, so in today's video I'm going to explain error objects in JavaScript and how to handle them. An error is an object that is created to represent a problem that occurs. Errors occur often, usually when we accept user input or establish a connection. It's an object that's created to represent a problem. So for example, I am going to console.log the word hello. And then afterwards, I'm going to display a message to indicate that we have reached the end of the program. You have reached the end. This runs as it should, right? Let's say I misspell log as leg. Well, we encounter an uncaught type error. There's many different types of errors. Console.leg is not a function. Type errors tend to happen when we try and access something within an object that doesn't exist. One big issue that we run into is that we prematurely exit the program. It never finishes executing. We have not reached the end. Errors, when they're uncaught, interrupt the normal flow of our program. Another example of an error would be a reference error. I will console.log x. But x isn't defined. We have an uncaught reference error. x is not defined. And again, it interrupts our program. We never reach the end. Errors can be generated for all sorts of issues, such as network issues, promise rejection, which we still need to talk about, and security errors. When we encounter a problem when doing one of these things, an error object will be generated, and it interrupts our program. There's a solution, though, and that is to handle these errors when they occur. We can do that with try, catch, and finally blocks. With the try block, we can enclose any code that might potentially cause an error such as if we're trying to establish a connection to something. If that connection fails, an error can occur. If we don't handle it, it's going to interrupt our program. So all of this code I will place within a try block. We will try all of this code. But we need a catch block too. The catch block has one parameter. It will catch an error object. Then let's console.log the error object to see what it is. So let's run this. We have a reference error. X is not defined. See, now we are reaching the end of the program. The program is not being interrupted. We have gracefully handled this error. Before it was uncaught, but now it's caught. For catching errors, I wouldn't recommend using console.log. Rather, I would use console.error. This will highlight any errors that occur and still handle them. It's good for debugging. We can clearly see the error. Reference error, x is not defined. And again, it doesn't interrupt our program. We still reach the end. Now, optionally, you can add a finally block. The finally block always executes regardless if an error comes up. The finally block is usually used for closing files, closing connections, or releasing resources. Usually when you open something or establish a connection, you need to close it afterwards. You don't want to leave it open. That's where the finally block comes in. Do any cleanup at the end, whether or not an error occurs. So just to test this, I'm going to console.log. This always executes. I'm going to console.log x. We have a reference error. It is caught, so it doesn't interrupt anything. We're still executing the finally block, and we reach the end of our program. If we don't run into any errors, I'm going to console.log, hello. There are no errors that occur. We don't end up catching anything. This always executes, the finally block, and we reach the end of our program. So any code that is considered dangerous, where it could cause an error, you'll want to surround with a try block, and then catch them. In the future, if you ever open any files or establish a connection, you'll want to finally block to close those connections. But we haven't discussed that yet. Errors can also occur when accepting user input because we don't know what the user is going to type in. In a worst case scenario, a user could type in a malicious script. In this next example, I'm going to create a constant for a dividend and a divisor. Const dividend equals window.prompt enter a dividend. With division, a dividend is the number that is being divided. And we need a divisor. A divisor is the number we're dividing by. Enter a divisor. Then I'm going to create a constant result. 
result equals our dividend divided by our divisor. Console.log the result. What is 1 divided by 2? 0 0.5. Now, mathematically speaking, we can't divide a number by 0. If you attempt to do this in JavaScript, I will divide 1 by 0. You end up with infinity. We can intentionally cause errors, then handle them with try, catch, and optionally finally blocks. So this code is considered dangerous. I'll place it within a try block. We need to catch any errors, catch an error object if it occurs, then console.error the error object. So just to test this, instead of console.log, I'll misspell log as leg. I should probably add a message just to confirm that we have reached the end. You have reached the end. 1 divided by 0. Type error, console.leg is not a function, but we still reach the end. Our program isn't interrupted. Within a try block, in certain situations, we can intentionally cause an error. I'm going to use an if statement. If our divisor is equal to zero, then I will throw a new error object. We're calling the error constructor to construct a new error object. Within the constructor, we have one argument we can pass in, a message. What is the error going to say? You can't divide by zero. OK, let's try this. Enter a dividend, one, enter a divisor. I'll type in zero, then press OK. We have a caught error. You can't divide by zero. Our program isn't interrupted. We still reach the end. Let's change console.leg back to log, because I forgot to do that. What if somebody attempts to type in something that's not a number? Enter a dividend 1, enter a divisor. I'll type in the word pizza. Not a number. You have reached the end. I would like to throw a new error when somebody doesn't type in a number. What I can do is that with our prompt, I will typecast it as a number. If somebody enters in some non-numeric characters for either the dividend or the divisor, we will store within there not a number. So let's check that with an if statement. If is not a number. If our dividend is not a number or our divisor is not a number, let's throw a new error. Throw new error. Values must be a number. I will divide 1 by the word pizza. Error. Values must be a number. We still reach the end of our program. With error objects, you can even create your own in certain situations, and then you can handle them however you want. All right, everybody, so those are error objects and how to handle them. An error is an object that is created to represent a problem that occurs. They occur often with user input or establishing some sort of connection. To handle them, you can use try, catch, and optionally, finally blocks, which are mostly used for cleanup. If there's any code that can cause an error, place it within a try block and catch any errors that happen. And well, everybody, that is how to handle errors in JavaScript.